Welcome to the channel. Now, I've been having a little bit of a fight as of late with these things. These guys are the index uh, uh, rings of the Dylan, and um, I have to say I've not had many of these break in the past, but uh, as soon as you get uh, an automated machine that pulls the handle for the Dylan, these things go all the time. Uh, you don't eject a primer for, uh, fully and all of a sudden, you know, you, there's a loud crack, you swear, and you've written off another ring indexer. I have had a look with the, the Ponsness Warren, that seems to be an occupational hazard, no matter how well you pay attention. Sooner or later, in a moment of uh, distraction, you know, you just rip one of these things apart. I've also had a look at the uh, offering from Double Alpha, I think. And uh, I saw their uh, machine demonstrated at the IWA. And although it's a lot more sophisticated, it still doesn't have an adjustable clutch. And that's really what's needed. So all these things have a, have a clutch of some description that the machine won't rip itself uh, to pieces. But the clutch doesn't seem to be adjustable on any of these where you have power on the upstroke and a, a gentle clutch on the downstroke so that even a small... Uh, obstruction on the downstroke which would stop the machine well that doesn't exist so if you have a machine that pulls the handle for you on a on a dylan you're invariably going to write off ring indexes and i've written off too many for my liking i have tried repairing these things and i've not been very successful my uh, initial approach was to uh, immerse them in all sorts of liquid. This one is a uh, pipe adhesive because I've also I've also done acetone, I've done what what are you? You are uh, isopropyl alcohol, I've uh, every liquid in the world this stuff. I think it's some sort of nylon seems to be completely undissolvable. And so uh with without dissolving it all you really have is a material like super glue. It's not strong enough. It won't hold. The forces are too great. Um, what I have done that has been successful, it's a little bit of a faff, but it does work. So I've used a hot soldering iron. And um, you have to make sure you don't have a tip which has uh, 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 any old solder on it, you know, just to make, clean the tip. And after that, you can just carefully, if you, if you hold them together into position with a soldering iron, you can uh, bond these things back together. Um, and that's that's okay. That actually works. I've got one in there right now where uh, it cracked at the side over there, and I have uh, I have glued it back together, applying heat, and it's holding quite nicely. Um, so that would be my recommendation for fixing these. The other thing that I have tried doing, with some success, I uh, found a, a diagram specification. Uh, online and uh, I got uh, the uh, ring in the ring indexer uh, 3d printed um, which again these work okay I've checked the dimensions they're fine I think the plastic well this is nylon again some sort of nylon is strong enough it just works fine I didn't really have to rework them the only trouble is printing them uh, at, a, at a 3d printing place costs just as much as buying the original so uh, at the moment my main approach to fixing this is still just to sit here with my soldering iron and you apply heat at the uh, joint where it's cracked glue it together apply more heat you can also take a little bit of uh, broken off plastic and just you know gently uh, glue over the top until it holds so with that i've been successful i can stretch each ring indexer now until it's broken two three times before i have to move on and given that each ring ring, ring indexer is about 12 to 14 bucks i think i mean it's quite expensive um I'm now all right. I've got it now down to about four pounds per uh, ring indexer if I get two repairs out of it. And I feel a lot better about that. Anyway, that's it from me and from us. And I will see you next time. Bye bye.